Hi, church family. On Sunday, we're going to start a new series, and I want to just take a minute and talk to you about it and tell you why we're doing it. Uh, we're, we're, we'll return to our doctrinal series uh, here in just a few weeks, but, but it seemed like this is an opportune time to deal with a, a subject that I think will be helpful to all of us. It's been something, it's something that's been on my mind for uh, a couple of years at least, but especially in the last six months, there's been this, been this reality as I've walked alongside families who are suffering under severe, just some really difficult issues. Um, the subject is lament. In a sin-sick world, it's, it's filled with suffering and shame. You'd think that we would have the, the, the corner on the market for lament. Like, you'd think that we would know how to lament. But it seems to me, as I look out on the church and the landscape of the church today, that we've lost our ability to do it, that, that we've lost the, the, the lament that's supposed to be able to give voice to our grief. We, we, we show up at church, we put on our happy faces in our Sunday go to church clothes to present the best image of ourselves and present to everyone that we're doing okay. We we post on social media that our families are happier than ever when behind closed doors marriages are crumbling. Parents are battling children. Circumstances feel overwhelming if not crushing. We will take 50 selfies in order to just post one so that we present to the world around us an image that says, I got this, when in reality we know we don't. But on the other end of the spectrum, on the other end of the spectrum from the overly positive Patricks are the always complaining Carls. Now, we, we all know someone like this. We all know people like this that, that are constantly complaining. Instead of asking you how you're doing so that they can honestly hear how you're doing there, they're looking for an opportunity to tell you how bad off they are. They're not putting on a show for anyone. These, these are people who complain constantly in the name of being genuine and keeping it real when, when really their goal is to, to just be the center of attention and the object of someone's sympathy. Now, the Bible's answer for our sorrow is Jesus. Absolutely, that is always the answer, the right answer. It, it's Jesus. But as we wait on Jesus, as we wait on the day of the Lord, as we, a, a day that we know will come, mind you, as we wait on him, the Bible teaches us that we are to praise him, that, that we are to hope in him. But it also teaches us that we are to lament in the day that we live today, in the crisis that we face today. It teaches us to move beyond the facade of happiness, to move beyond the the constant complaining, to teach us to cry out to God, the only one who can act and end our lament. Job lamented. David lamented. Jeremiah wrote a whole book of the Bible given to a lament. It's called Lamentations. Jesus lamented. In fact, the scripture knows Jesus as the man of sorrows. the, the shortest book, the, the shortest verse in the in the Bible is not Jesus laughed, but Jesus wept. And while we don't want to make an argument from from silence, the Bible never does say that he laughed. Is it is it isn't it significant that one of the final words he said was from Psalm twenty two, a psalm of lament? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, let's talk about the Psalms for just a moment. They're they're a divinely inspired book of songs and and prayers. God's people speaking God's divinely inspired word back to God. That's what they are. Did did, did you know, though, that the largest genre of Psalms is lament? There there are Psalms of praise. There are Psalms of thanksgiving. There there are several different genres of Psalms, but the largest one, one one-third of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. Are we now then to assume that because we live on this side of the cross, because because we have the hope of Jesus, that suddenly these passages of Scripture have no bearing on our lives, have no application for us? Are we to assume that the likes of Job and David and, and the other psalmists that wrote laments, Jeremiah or Jesus, were were faithless because they lamented? Absolutely not. Instead, I would suggest that we need to learn to join their faith-filled, hopeful Laments. We, we need to regain the voice of lamenting among God's people so that we can honestly cry out like David did in Psalm 13. Can I just read it for you? How, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? 
How, how long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and, and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in you, in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt with me bountifully. See, David isn't pretending to to be happier than he is. He isn't complaining simply for complaint's sake. He is pleading with God to do what only God can do. He is calling on the God who is able to end his lament, to end his lament, to end his reason for lamenting. This is exactly what we need to do in the face of our current crisis and every season of suffering that we face from here on out. We, we need to regain this voice of lament for ourselves, for our own sake, but, but not just for our own sake, for, for the help to be of service to our brothers and sisters in Christ that they might learn beside us to lament so that as they face their own suffering, they too can lament. But beyond the church, beyond the walls of the church, beyond the body of Christ, the, the world desperately needs to see Christians pleading with God for the mercy we all, that we all need and only He can provide. So, so I hope that this Sunday you'll, you'll join us online, that you'll be online with us, and, and I pray it will be a blessing to you as we gather around God's Word and, and begin to learn to, to lament.